Hey everyone, there's been a lot of stuff happening in the legal world for HCMC, so let's get to it and talk about what's been going on in the courts over the past month. First, the lawsuit against Philip Morris is slowly moving forward in the federal appeals court. Right now, HCMC is trying to have a U.S. Patent Office ruling tossed out that declares that its electronic pipe patent is invalid. HCMC needs the patent to remain valid in order to fight their patent infringement lawsuit over Philip Morris's ICOS tobacco heating device. The Patent Office tossed out HCMC's patent, ruling that the patent's ideas were already covered by older patents. HMC is asking the appeals court to reinstate the patent, arguing that the patent office did not correctly apply patent law and procedure when it accepted Philip Morris's argument against the patent. At this stage in the appeal, both sides have submitted their written arguments, which are called briefs, and the court will receive that giant pile of documents soon and schedule an oral argument hearing. At that argument hearing, lawyers from HCMC and Philip Morris will go in front of the three-judge panel and answer a bunch of questions about their arguments and the evidence. It will be several months, however, before we know when this hearing is scheduled. In the other appeal HCMC had against Philip Morris, that was the one against the motion to dismiss that HCMC ultimately won, it took about six months between the, the briefs being filed and the oral argument being held and scheduled. So it could take six months or more. Nothing's really expected to happen in the meantime until that hearing is scheduled, so the HCMC versus Philip Morris legal saga is mostly at a standstill until that important next step occurs. I'll have a separate video on the channel going through the arguments each side made in their briefs so that you can understand what HCMC and Philip Morris are saying in this appeal of the Patent Office decision. Look for that on the channel in the next few days if it's not already there now. Now, while the appeal is going on, there has been some news with Philip Morris's ICOS device in itself. If you recall, the U.S. International Trade Commission ruled that Philip Morris could not import the ICOS for sale in the U.S. They manufacture it overseas, and they wanted to import it here for sale in the States. Instead, they're going to have to manufacture the ICOS here if they want to sell it in the U.S. U.S. sales are what HCMC cares about because that's what you're going after in a U.S. patent infringement lawsuit. If there aren't any U.S. sales of the device, well, then there are no damages to sue for. So HCMC needs Philip Morris to be selling the ICOS in the United States. Well, unfortunately, last month, Philip Morris announced that it's taking a lot longer to get manufacturing of the ICOS set up, and they have projected a delay in the U.S. rollout of the ICOS. It was originally scheduled to be on shelves by spring of 2024, just about six months from now, but now it sounds like a full rollout might not happen until 2025. So what does this mean for the lawsuit? Well, not that much, really, actually. Uh, Philip Morris still plans to go through with selling the globally popular ICOS device here in the States, so we can expect to see it still get on shelves eventually. Meanwhile, the appeal, that's not likely to be done until mid to late 2024 anyway. And then if uh, Philip Morris loses that appeal, if HMC wins the appeal, it's uh, likely to either go back to the patent office or then start again in the court. Uh, so the lawsuit might take until 2025 or later to, to even wrap up anyway. So that'll it'll still be going when Philip Morris gets those sales started. And wherever that revenue comes from, that's what HCMC will be able to go after as the lawsuit wraps up. So as far as Philip Morris has said, the ICOS is still coming to the United States, but it's taking a little bit more time than previously expected. Meanwhile, we have a new lawsuit to follow. Last month, HCMC filed a patent infringement lawsuit, same kind of lawsuit that they filed against Philip Morris, against R.J. Reynolds. R.J. Reynolds is the other behemoth corporation in the tobacco industry. You might remember some of my past videos on the legal battles between Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds. They sued each other over lots of different things. Well, here we have HCMC going after Big Shot number two, claiming that R.J. Reynolds has violated a different patent owned by HCMC. This is a completely different patent than what is in the Philip Morris case. So all that stuff with Philip Morris has no impact on this. This is a completely separate lawsuit, separate patent, separate device. HCMC claims that R.J. Reynolds' Views Alto e-cigarette device violates a patent that they hold. The Views, that's about the most popular brand of e-cigarette in the U.S., and the Views Alto is the primary sub-brand. So they made about $1.6 billion in 2022 in the U.S. alone just with the Views Alto. That's according to the company, to, to R.J. Reynolds. That's a lot of money to go after in a patent infringement case. The main competitor to the Views is Juul, which, funny enough, is owned by Altria, which was part of Philip Morris and helped make the ICOS. 
Um, but we're talking about huge piles of money that HCMC is trying to go after with this patent infringement lawsuit uh, if the court finds that the views Alto violates HCMC's patent. Now, this is a U.S. patent case, so only U.S. sales matter for the most part because you normally can't get damages for sales overseas because the other countries over there have their own patent systems and legal processes to go after when a patent is infringed there. R.J. Reynolds' case was filed in the federal court of North Carolina. That's a different state and a different judge than the Philip Morris case, which was in Georgia. But both of those cases are in the federal court system, so they have similar rules and procedures to follow, how motions work, how cases progress, that sort of thing, how they're appealed. They all fit under the federal rules of procedure there. This is just the first step. They filed the complaint. That's the first document you file to start a lawsuit. And it's not time yet for RJ Reynolds to do their response or how they're going to answer the uh, the lawsuit. They have until November 17th. They, there was a motion to extend the time. It was agreed upon by both parties. So it took a little bit longer. You know, they had a little bit more than their 30 days that they normally have. So by November 17th, we'll hear what the response is. RJ Reynolds could just do an answer, what's called an answer, which is a document filing that just says, hey, we deny these. We, uh, we admit these allegations. Uh, we defend ourselves this way. Um, that's the pretty standard way to respond to a, a case. They could also file a motion to dismiss like Philip Morris did, trying to throw out the case. Um, we'll have to see what, what happens there. Um, or they could do, uh, do a mix of things. So answer, motions, motion to dismiss, a couple different responses. But that's all due by November 17th, unless they get another extension somehow. RJ Reynolds could also try to run to the patent office and try to get the patent thrown out. Same thing Philip Morris did. It's very common to do that when you're sued for patent infringement. I don't know the odds of that being successful. I haven't started looking at that yet, but we'll have to see if, if RJ Reynolds, I mean, they've done it before when Philip Morris and RJ Reynolds sue each other, they also ran to the patent office to, to have each other's patents violated, uh, viol val invalidated. So that could be a thing that we see, you know, these things take a long time and there's a lot of action in there, but again, there's a giant pile of money awaiting if HCMC can accomplish this lawsuit. I'll have a separate video uh, soon, if not already there, diving into the details of HCMC's complaint, talking about the legal process, all the different steps that we could see, um, kind of like what I did in the couple of years ago with the beginning of the Philip Morris lawsuit. So look for that. I'll also uh, talk some more about the Views Alto, how it's different than um, what we're talking about, how this patent with HCMC is different than the Philip Morris one, um, and lots of more info on that. Lots of stuff to come on that because we're just getting started on the lawsuit and I will be following it step by step just like I have with the Philip Morris lawsuit. Finally, the last bit of news is really about a lack of news. As far as we can tell from company communications, HCMC still plans to go through with creating that spinoff company, HCWC. The last announcement we saw for them was back on September 12th, and they announced that they filed for the IPO, the initial public offering for HCWC. Uh, remember, HCWC, their, the plan is to give all the uh, brick and mortar stores, the wellness centers, the health food stores to that company, and HCMC will keep all the patents. So the Philip Morris lawsuit, the RJ Reynolds lawsuit, that would be HCMC. HCWC, the spinoff company, would get kind of like the physical locations and the, and the, the, act, the action there. So we should see another announcement soon. I don't know what soon means in this case. It could be days or months. Um, it depends on what HCMC is doing there and their process, but we need to see an announcement of the new record date when they decide how many shares you have and then how many shares of HCWC you would get about a month later after that. Um, kind of what was, what was going to happen before, before they delayed it. So we have to hear more from HCMC about that. Otherwise we don't really know what's going on. Um, we're not in the room with them, right? So we have to wait and see, um, which, you know, kind of the, the mantra of this whole thing, right? Just wait and see, see what happens. Um, and you can make your decisions based on that. Uh, the, the the important takeaway is that y your shares have not been counted yet. Um, that was delayed. So you still have to own shares in the future when they say the date of record is in order to get that dividend of the, uh, the, the HCWC shares. So I don't know a ton about that yet because, again, we have to hear from the company about that to, to know. All right. So that's the news roundup for October. A lot of stuff happened. There's a lot of stuff to follow coming up. Look for videos on the channel discussing the details of both of those lawsuits. Um, now we've got two big ones to follow. Um, come hang out in the Shark Invested Waters Discord. We can talk more about these cases. You can ask questions. Um, I tend to post there first before I put, post on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can visit the Discord by looking at the link in the video description below. I really appreciate you all watching and following along and hanging out with me. And I hope that you will keep all doing your due diligence 
and make good, well-researched decisions in everything you do. And I'll see you all next time.